What's up guys, Big J coming at you again today and uh, as you can see, I brought a friend. Um, this is like trying to cram 10 pounds of shit in a 5 pound bag, but hey, we're going to do it. Um, I like to build some coils every now and then, but I don't get super fancy with the coils. Um, everybody's got a guy for something. I want a coil, that's my guy. Uh, so today we're just going to do, I think we're going to use you know the old coil master kit. And my boy Matt over here is going to show you how to basically make some simple coils. If he wants to get fancy, he can get fancy. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, he also does uh, a good bit of blogging on our blog uh, for Lizard Juice. So if you want some good education, um, definitely check it out. It's uh, lizardjuice.com backslash blog um, and check him out. Uh, he also has a Facebook. Let me make sure I get this right. Facebook.com backslash Vaping with Matt, two T's. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get set up. Uh, I'm going to cut right now. We're going to get set up. When we come back, I'm going to have the dude show you how to cut some coils. Peace. All right, guys. So, as promised, here is everything you are going to need to make a coil. Take it away, Matt. All right, guys. This is all you need to make a coil. Obviously, you're going to need your wire. This is a 24 gauge Canthal wire. You're gonna need a coil jig, screwdriver, anything to wrap it around. Uh, I used all the tools from the Coil Master Kit, just makes it a lot easier. You're gonna need some tweezers or ceramic tweezers. I prefer ceramic because it doesn't ruin the coils as much. Wire cutters, and also your mod with your RDA, RDTA, RTA, anything that you're using to build on. Uh, right now I'm going to be using the Tsunami by Geek Vape. And you're going to need your scissors and your cotton. Obviously you need cotton to go through the wick or to go through the coil so you can actually uh, vape. All right, so let's get into building. You're going to take your wire, you're going to cut about eight inches off of it. All I need is about eight inches to make two decent coils. Take your coil jig with the Coil Master Tools makes it really easy because you just put your wire through the jig, pinch that wire, take the coiling tool, simply just wrap around the tool. Like I said, it makes it extremely easy. There's your first coil. Hold on a second, buddy. Throw that back up there. Let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit, get a little better look at it. There you go. How many wraps is that? Uh, that's going to be about five, six wraps. And I what believe. do you think that's basically going to ohm out to? Uh, once the dual coil is set on, it should come out to about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohm. Cool. All right. Then let me get back. Continue on, sir. From there, again, you're going to cut that wire. You want to leave enough on the coil to where you could actually thread it through your RDA or RTA. So you want to cut till you got about a little less than an inch, maybe about an inch on there. Let's see if we can zoom down a little bit again. There you go. It's fun being on this side of the camera where I'm just a cameraman. <laughs> and I lost my piece of wire. Stand by for technical difficulties, boys and girls. While Matt searches for his wire, you will find that happens uh, when you do clip some wire. You will find that it flies, so be careful, guys. <laughs> All right, back at it again. Go ahead and just take your wire. Repeat that step again. Now, what I have noticed is let the tool do the work. Don't smash it because if you do, you're going to get a screwed up coil. When you do smash it. Basically what's going to happen, instead of having a nice looking wire like this, this piece is going to be bent the opposite way, and you're just going to have an ugly looking coil, and you have to play around with it to fix it, and that's never any fun. So, now you've got your two coils. They should about match up in length. Get a little more on camera there, champ. So 
let the folks see what you're doing. So I'm going to wrap this one more time just to make it even. And now we've got two even coils. Again, you're going to snip that wire. Leave just a little bit on there. Once you've got your two coils, you are now ready to put it in. Tell you what, guys, let's go ahead and take a break. I will uh, go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this and see if we can't get you a nice close-up look so you can tell exactly what Matt's talking about. Be right back. All right, guys, and we're back. And as promised, I got the zoom function on so you guys can actually see what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> take it away, Matt. All right, guys. Again, two ends of the wire. This is a velocity style deck, so it's got the two posts, four holes. What you're going to do, easiest way to do it, take your wire, you're going to put one through the top, the other one right through the bottom of the opposite side post. When you got that in there, go ahead and flip it around. We'll get an even better zoom. Yeah, I'll zoom in on that. There we go. So as you can see, one's in the top of the one side, the other's in the bottom at the other side. Once you've got those in, go ahead and push that in a little bit so it's not going to sit right at the edge. Right there. And this specific deck comes with a specific tool one of your hex tools where you are going to tighten the screws back in and I'll show you exactly what that looks like once these are tightened. Alright guys, once that's screwed in it's going to sit in place. Yep, Just like that. Even though the coil is bent a little bit right now, you don't have to worry about that. We are going to fix that later. What you're going to do now, take your wire tool or your wire clippers. You're going to go ahead and clip the ends of those wires off. You do not want to have any wires showing on the opposite side of your coil because that's where your other coil is going to be. We're going to go ahead and repeat that process again. I'll save you from this, folks, and we'll come back when it's all put back together. Be right back. All right, guys, as promised, we are back, both coils installed. And again, it's your show, Matt. <laughs> all right, guys, after you got both coils installed and the wires are clipped off the edge, what you're going to do is you're going to notice that these coils are not exactly even or straight. I'm going to go back, take a coil jig, go ahead, just put that back through your coils and easily straighten those out. And those look about good. So from there, you want to make sure your coils are about the same height and about as evenly centered as possible. Once you've got that done, then you want to start dry firing your coils. Fire! So, let's make sure Now, am I right in saying that we start at a lower wattage than obviously what I can handle? Because you don't want to fry them out the first time around, correct? Right. You always want to start off at a pretty low wattage. Let's make sure this mod is reading them. So, we've got our wattage set right now at about 21. 21 watts. You then want to fire up your coils. Oh, they're stubborn. Oh, they are. All right. When you first notice this, you're going to notice that they are not heating correctly. 
this happens pretty much anytime you build a coil, you will get this. All you have to do, take your ceramic tweezers, start playing with your coils. You're going to pinch them a little bit, get them all so touching nice and evenly. And let's try that again. I'm going to kick my wattage up a little bit so it fires a little quicker. Let's try this at about 30 watts. That's getting a little better. So it's getting a little better. One's heating up a little quicker than the other. I'm going to continue to play with these for a minute. Where are the ohms at? It's oven out right about a 0.4. A decent little starter especially for these small coils so got them heating up about evenly now that's what you want to see directly from the center outward now this is also the process if you're using all the different kind of like the nichrome and stuff like that that's where everybody gets those pretty finishes right like the blues and the reds and all that other good stuff right canthal is a little different than nichrome uh canthal definitely needs to be heated you know evenly you can start low or start as high as you want with your uh as long as you're following ohm's law with a 0.4 i could literally start burning these at whatever wattage i felt like uh i normally don't feel safe going over 60 70 with a 0.4 nichrome if you want those pretty finished colors you absolutely have to start low uh when nichrome burns a little differently as you start with a lower wattage and then heat it up more and more, that's when you get those different colors. Gotcha. Well, I guess we'll just keep it simple for today then. So, those are looking pretty nice. Uh, once you got these heating up and cooling down evenly, you then need to wait for the coils to actually cool down because you're going to take your cotton and you're going to insert your cotton into your RDA, RTA, RDTA, whatever you feel like using. So we're going to take a quick break, let these coils cool down, come back after they're done. All right, boys and girls, we're back for the wicking. All right, guys, so the coils have cooled down. Easiest way to test that theory, you are literally just going to touch your coils. <laughs> <laughs> You're a braver man than I. You definitely want to wait, you know, a good couple minutes for those to cool down, especially when you get into the more advanced coil building where there's a lot more wire to actually cool. Right now, this only took a couple minutes, so those coils are cool to the touch. Now let's go to wicking. You're going to take your cotton. Easiest way I've figured out how to do this. You're going to take your cotton and spread it out. So once the cotton's spread out, it's almost see-through. You then take your uh, scissors, you're going to cut some pieces off. You need two pieces. Once you've got that, I normally grab the end of the cotton. I will start taking some of the cotton off. The residue. So it's going to look a little frayed. That's okay. Because what you're going to do is you're going to take that end, hold it tight, and just twist it up. It's going to end up looking like that. Beautiful, isn't it? Take your cotton. Here you go ahead. Put it right through those coils. Till it looks like that. And repeat that process one more time. Sorry guys, you do have to watch me take cotton apart. They watched me do worse. <laughs> Twist those up again. Slides right through that coil. Now I know this video is obviously taking a couple minutes to do. It normally takes about, you know, 45 seconds to a minute to actually do all this by yourself once you get the hang of it. Once you've got your cotton in, you do want to grab both sides. Cut that cotton pretty evenly. You don't want one side being longer than the other, simply because this cotton gets tucked underneath your coils. So that's why you were saying earlier, you know, make sure everything's centered and the same height and all that other good stuff. You want everything centered and everything just right so you can tuck that cotton in so it makes it nice, even.
looks just like that. Now, you're ready. Put some juice on here. This part normally takes longer than anything else because you have to juice up all your cotton. Now I noticed when the tails came down you left a little uh, space in the middle there. Is that for airflow? On the Tsunami there are two small airflow spots. It's kind of hard to see with the cotton now. But right underneath where my coil are, or my coils are, as you can see, kind of, there are two little tubes for airflow. That airflow is going to be sucked straight through the side of there, up those tubes to put air through your coils. That helps produce more vapor. Everybody loves more vapor. Again, guys, the more airflow you have through your RDA, RTA, RDTA, and the more advanced builds you start doing, the more vapor and flavor you're actually going to notice. Basic coils do give off enough vapor, but you get used to them pretty quickly, and you're going to start wanting to do some more advanced stuff, because that's when the fun starts. So those coils are pretty juicy looking. Take the top. Put that right back on, and you have successfully built your first coil, guys. Take top off, fire it up, see what it'll do. And this is what it's going to look like. Pretty decent. For a little simple set of coils, guys, that's not bad. I mean, if you're just getting into building coils, this simple little setup, it's a dual coil, it's nothing special but it gets you the idea of how to do it and as you can see it'll put off a decent amount of vapor so there it is boys and girls big J with matt uh how to build some coils on an rda see you next time hey guys big J. just want to say thanks for watching my videos i really appreciate it if you want to help me out give me that thumbs up share my content um subscribe man if you like what you're seeing subscribe um lots of new stuff coming in the future uh, some new faces, some obviously new product. Um, man, if you have any suggestions, drop me a line. I'm more than willing to try anything. Take it easy.